Hi cuties! Uh, it is time for our September wrap-up of books. Obviously, that's what we do on this channel. Uh, we're going to talk about all the books I read, the stats where I'm at, the haul that I did, and we're going to be picking our new cauldron prompts for the end of the year. Let's get to it, right? Um, all of the books are timestamped in the below so if you have a certain book that you're more interested in hearing about it's gonna be there. The very first book that we got through was Happy Place by Emily Henry. I did give this one four stars. Uh, I didn't like it as much as I liked uh, Book Lovers. I think that's still my favorite one and I did write like Beach Read. I haven't read People We Meet on Vacation but uh, I did enjoy this. This was very frustrating though for a lot of it and it's mostly a book about two very insecure people who need to express their feelings and emotions and inner turmoil and then everything would have not happened the way it did but whatever it's fine uh it's actually it's all every character in this book just needing to say their truths <laughs> that's what it really is um so i do understand how some people have not really liked this book at all it is a fairly frustrating read i read it mostly with a furrowed brow uh, i still enjoyed it i liked where it ended up for the most part. I did think some of that ending message was a little off, uh, but sure, whatever, whatever we wanna do with that. Um, but yeah, happy place. We're gonna try to do these quickly. Next up, we already hit our five star. I read a lot of five stars this month, actually. I think this might be my best, like, average rating for a, in a month in a long, long time. Uh, but we have a five star read, and that is Blood Marked by Tracy Dion. I just love this series so much. I don't know how I'm gonna wait for the next one. Um, I just love how complicated the characters are. I like how in-depth the system is, uh, the magic system and the history. I like the topics that it touches on, um, especially with the historical aspect of this. I just, I thoroughly enjoyed this. It gave me so much, so much happy and just juicy, juicy fantasy world building. I, I just loved it. I love this so much. Um, I remember when this series came out, the first book, Legendborn, because this is the second book, it was wildly hyped and then like no one talked about it. And I'm like, what, what happened? This deserves things. This deserves a lot. And I love it a lot. And I want to read more. <laughs> Next up, we read Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong. This is her adult book. I have never read anything by Chloe Gong before. This is my first foray into it. And it wasn't great. And I think a, a lot of other people don't like this one. And there is a very problematic aspect in this book. And that is there is a concept of uh, jumping into other people's bodies and using it and that's I'm very uncomfortable with. I get that this, this is an Antony and Cleopatra retelling. I don't know a ton about the original Shakespeare play or about the whole situation with them. I just am not as informed about it. Um, so I can't go for the accuracy in an adaptation. I was really confused as to like the why uh, for, for one. Like there's this competition, but I don't understand the purpose of this competition or why the competition is this way because it seems like a lot of innocent bystanders just get to get killed because people are jumping into other bodies and getting stabbed. So a world building I felt this was fairly weak. I didn't understand it. I didn't quite grasp it. I liked some parts of it. I liked some witty banter parts of it. There were some good twists and turns by the end of it but I don't know. I don't know if I'll continue with the series or not. I gave it three stars. Um, it's a beautiful copy of it though. Fairy Loot did pretty good with that. I just, mm, I wasn't a huge fan of it. Then we have another five star. This is a middle grade and that is The Bone Garden by Heather Kastner. And I thought this was delightful. Uh, and it has a really good conversation about familial relationships with like mother daughter even though not sort of but like emotionally and manipulative relationships and kind of breaking free from that which was it was just really good to see in a middle grade to show that hey the person who raised you does it, you don't owe them your undying allegiance just because they give you food and shelter um 
if they're not going to, you know, unconditionally love you as their own child, then you, that's it, bond broken. Um, I loved that. I loved that we had such a interesting magic in this too. It's very spooky paranormal. So if you're looking for a very quick kind of spooky read, but it's middle grade and stuff, I would pick up Bone Garden. This was a bomb book, so I'm really glad I did get to read it. This is one of the few bomb books I've read so far that I'm like, thank God I read it and didn't get rid of it because this was very good, very charming, loved it. Another five star. We have a bunch of five stars in a row here. We have This Is Why They Hate Us by Aaron H. Aceves. Um, Aceves? I'm so sorry if I don't pronounce that correctly. This, it took me a bit to like it, I will say. It's still five stars because I'm just very asexual <laughs> and this poor boy just really 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 wants to have a have a boyfriend well he's really in love with his best friend but he's fairly certain his best friend is straight um or one of his best friends not his absolute best friend um and he is bisexual and he just tries to find love with someone else and deals with these other boys who aren't great. One of them, I'm like, mm, maybe we should have gone for that boy. But <laughs> um, I, I did, I liked how the character growth and that's why this gets five stars because I really didn't like our main character at first and I grew to love him and grew to understand him and he grew and everybody gets to grow in this. And I just, I really like this. This is one that I think a lot of people should uh, pick up if you're a fan of other books like Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe if you like those types of books this is one this one actually I have a tab in it because it had a line in here um, and that is they say you need to love yourself before you can love someone else but I feel like I need confirmation sometimes that I'm someone to love and if that's not what goes in my brain all the time I don't know what is, but that's, that's a phrase I hate is, is people telling me, you need to love yourself. And I'm like, that might never happen. So I'm undeserving of love. I need some, I need to be told by someone romantically interested in me that I'm worthy of love. Not, I'm like, I get it from friends and family all the time, but it's not the same, you know, it's not the same. So I don't feel as worthy of love because of that. And this book just resonated for me with that line. And there's a bunch of other lines in there that are amazing. So go read that book. Next five star read is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I hadn't read this yet. I know I needed to read this. There's supposedly a third book coming out. I loved this. I loved how complicated this is. I loved these very, uh, uh, what's morally gray characters that we get. I adored this. I adored a lot of the side characters. It had me like, sh I was listening to this on audiobook and while I was working on stuff, I would shriek, no, because I, a character that I loved, I thought was dead. And then he comes back and I'm good. And then he almost dies again. And I'm like, ah, and so it had me freaking out a lot with it. And I really liked it. Actually, right after that, I immediately read the little 1.5 uh, graphic novel extraordinary uh, which I did enjoy I'm glad I waited to read this after reading this one um, because it does show uh, the, some of the scenes that are in this book in graphic novel form while still dealing with other characters so that's the next book this one I gave a four just because I wanted more from it and there were certain aspects of it I was like eh, I don't really care for that um, but this amazing it wasn't amazing our only I think this is our only two star book yeah, two star book. Another bomb book, The Accidental Beauty Queen by Terry Wilson. I hated this. This is another case of authors thinking people are bookish, which is really weird because authors should be fairly bookish people. Being bookish means you're obsessed with Harry Potter. Every two goddamn seconds, there was a Harry Potter reference in this. Granted, it is set in Florida. This main character is trying to go on vacation to Harry Potter World because she's a children's librarian. Uh, and her sister is a beauty queen and has this horrible, like, allergic reaction that on her face. And they're identical twins, so they swap places. So it's parent trap, bit of miscongeniality. It does acknowledge miscongeniality in this. Um, I, the love story, I didn't believe at all. I didn't believe their relationship. I got really frustrated with all of the characters. Uh, I got a lot of her just blaming other people rather than herself 
and having like zero character growth. So I was not a fan of that one at all. What I was a fan of back up to a five star is the Frugal Wizards Handbook for Surviving Medieval England by Brando Sando. Um, I love this. I didn't love it as much as Tress of the Emerald Sea, but they're wildly different books. So I don't want to compare them. Um, but in the like the secret projects of the two I've now read, I still am ranking that one higher. I liked this a lot. The audiobook is very fun because Kate Redding is the handbook basically. And um, then Michael Kramer is reading the full part of it. Uh, I was confused for a while, like what is happening with this? But I ended up really liking it. I love the humor in this. This is very satirical humor. So if you're a fan of things like, um, what's it called? <sighs> Not Princess Beard, that's the third one. Oh my God. Anyway, but Princess Beard, no country for old gnomes. Kill the farm boy, that's what it is. So if you like Kill the Farm Boy or other like very satirical, but if you like like what we do in the shadows, our flag means death, that type of humor, that humor, not the settings and characters, but, but the humor of that, I think you'll like, you'll probably like this. I definitely enjoyed it a lot. Next up, another bomb book uh, that was officially on the TBR is I Stop Somewhere by T.E. Carter. I gave this four stars. It hit very hard. Um, this is fairly much more graphic of all of the stories that I've read that deal with essay assault. Oh, that's, that's assault assault. Wow. That deal with essay, the aftermath of essay, and also the scarier side even even scarier side the unaliving part of essay um this is very difficult it was difficult to get through because of of that it's it was more it wasn't very graphic but it was more detailed than like speak was um so speak also talked about the same issues i've read a few other books like speak where they don't go into detail about the assault itself but this one goes into not graphic detail, but the moment is there. Um, and this is told from the perspective of a character who is, I don't want to spoil it, but that bad, bad things have happened to this character. Um, and it has very powerful messages in it, especially in dealing with that culture. Um, and the aftermath of it, how the media represents it, how small towns are represented with it. It's a lot. Um, so be prepared for that one if you choose to pick it up. Then we read Once in Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. I really enjoyed this as well. I did give this one four stars because it lost me a little bit, but I love a story about sisters. Hello, Hispacac. Um, I loved the unique, the sisters felt very reminiscent of like my own life with my sisters, uh, and how they were. And I... I really liked them. I loved how unique this was. It's chonky. It is a standalone though, which I really like finding these standalone kind of fantasies. This is historical fantasy sort of, um, where witches are real and dealing, doing, dealing with suffragettes time. Um, yeah, it's, uh, this was really, really good. Uh, really well written. The world building the systems of magic, everything was really, really great in this. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Alex e. Harrow is just a fantastic writer. Then we read The Light at the Bottom of the World by London Shaw. I gave this one three. It's a, an upper three. I'm not sure where I'm feeling. I do have the sequel, so I will be reading that. Um, it took me a while to really get into this one because the world building felt very confusing because this is a post-apocalyptic story where basically everything is underwater now and London, which is where we're at in, in this story, uh, is underwater and everyone is living underwater. Instead of like in Waterworld where they're all on top of the water, everyone's below it. They've built their cities under here. They use submersibles like cars. There's a big race and stuff um, and there is conspiracies abound. Uh, which is what is happening with our main character whose father was taken away uh, for helping people basically unalive themselves because they were so depressed and being with the the sickness of being under the water and not seeing the sun anymore uh, it's complicated it's a it's very it's a dystopian uh, which I hadn't read in a while but not the best but I'm 
a little bit intrigued to know more. There's also these creatures that were human, but now are able to live and, and withstand the pressure and, and swim and breathe underwater um, that are called anthropoids, I believe. And but they all attack human civilizations and they're evil, but are they? You know, that kind of situation. Next up, another five star read. And that is Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. I freaking love this so much. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What a character growth we had in this book. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. It's so good. I just love TJ Klune's writing, okay? He creates these charming, whimsical, but still talking about very heavy topics like this is all about death okay our main character has died and he's dealing with being reaped and uh dealing with a a ferryman who's trying to guide him to move on to the next life but he's very stubborn as he was kind of a, a jerk in real life he was that lawyer who didn't experience emotion or anything and everyone who was emotional was beneath him uh, because the only thing that matters in life is work so work 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 right um, he was that type of character very scroogey type of character that has this amazing character arc growth there's all these other great characters there's a ghost dog we love the ghost dog <laughs> I just loved it. I loved these characters. It's, it's another, he creates these found families that are just wonderful and yeah, read, read it all. Next up we have a 3.5, still don't know totally where I sit with it, but we have The Kindred by Alicia Dow. This felt like a grown up Disney Channel original movie because they're aliens and they land on Earth and have to learn about Earth life while trying to hide from these evil overlords who want to kidnap them slash kill them slash blame them for the murder of the entire royal family. So they're in hiding, but they're kindred, which means they are linked by their minds. This is a program that they have uh, to help humble the royals, basically. But they were never meant to be kindreds uh, because he is a duke and she is just a poor common girl. Uh, but they're besties and both secretly in love with each other but they're not allowed to be in love with each other. They actually kind of know they're in love with each other, but they're not allowed to be in love with each other because of their status. Um, but I enjoyed it. It was fun, but the whole time, especially when we get to Earth and they're having fun with the cheerleading squad, uh, I'm just like, this feels like a Disney movie. <laughs> if you ever saw um, Stepsister from Planet Weird, that's what vibe this gave off that one. Next up, another five-star read. We have Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender. This was fantastic. This is another A, great character arc, B, great prose with lines that I wholeheartedly related to. Um, it is about a trans boy. He is very marginalized because he's brown, he's trans, um, he's poor. He, he has a lot of things and his bestie, he, he lives some, most of the time with his best friend. Um, but his name is Felix Love and he's never been in love and he really, really wants to be in love, but uh, just can't seem to meet anybody. And he doesn't feel worthy of love and his dad keeps dead naming him on accident and his mother left when they were, when, when, when he was very, very young. And he's still kind of questioning his identity as a trans man, which I loved that this talked about other identities within the non-binary spectrum, which was just fantastic. Um, he gets outed through an art gallery because he's at like a fancy art school um, and he's trying to figure out who did it. And he thinks it's this person who used to be their friend, but now is just an asshole and is like kind of a transphobe, um, unintentional transphobe because he says things and like, I didn't mean it like that, but it's like, you still said it, bro. Um, and so he creates basically a catfish account to get the truth, but then starts talking with him more and learning that there's more going on even though it's not excusable to treat someone like that um they develop a kind of pen pal even though he doesn't know and blah blah and then discovering there's a kind of this love triangle going on for him even though in, in the beginning you know he's like oh no one will ever love me and it's like oh no oh no this person's in love with me oh no this other person's in love with me i might be in love with him i might be in love with him too so it was an interesting, it's one of the few times where the love triangle trope actually like worked for me. Next up we have The Library of the Unwritten by AJ Hackwith. This was very interesting and I enjoyed it a lot. I did give this one four stars. It lost me a little bit in terms of attention, 
but I liked it. This is a, a basically a library in hell where everyone's unfinished work lives. Um, and those characters usually sometimes try to escape and get to their authors to get them to finish their story. Um, and there's one character that escapes from their books, meets the author, and then uh, gives them their pages. And then that author is like, no. And they're stuck now. But they're also hiding secrets. Our librarian herself is hiding secrets while they're all trying to find these mystical codex pages from the devil's bible and heaven and hell are going to battle we've got Uriel we've got Ramiel everybody's hanging out and dealing with stuff and there's this epic journey through various afterlives like they get to go to Valhalla and there's this amazing battle of like name that quote from an author a famous author and I really and it was like it turns those that if you're wrong or right into or it turns your your quote into a weapon that if the person doesn't guess it will hurt them. It was very fun and interesting. I liked the going through of all these different areas, trying to get back to the library to defend it. Um, so I was, I really liked this. It was a very unique world that I thoroughly enjoyed. So I will be continuing this series. Next up, speaking of continuing series, we finally, finally read book two of Temeraire. We have Throne of Jade. I forgot how much I love Temeraire. I just love Temeraire so much. Temeraire gets a cold in this. That's so cute. And yet, it's so, it's high stakes, but it didn't feel high stakes. And granted, I do feel like that was the fault of the narrator because the way he reads these, it makes it feel like I'm reading a classic. So even in the big battle scenes, it felt very flat. It just was delivered very flatly, even though the words themselves were exciting. His delivery just was not, was not the vibe of what this is. But I, so I think I'll continue reading um, physically. I did listen to this as an audiobook because my library just happened to get the audiobook for book two. I don't have any other audiobooks for these. So I definitely remember enjoying reading Temeraire physically before. So I think Black Powder War is the third book and that one I will read physically. Then finally got through the TBR and we read Sing Me to Sleep by Gabby Burton. I did enjoy this as well. Um, I am going to be this one four stars. And uh, again, it took me a bit to get into it. I really liked its take on sirens though. And the entire time you're going through this book, she's lying to everyone because she's a secret assassin who's now suddenly assigned to be guard of the prince. She's living a double life and that's where all of this mess goes in plan and it's much more convoluted. The twists and turns this took I was not prepared for especially in some of the bigger reveals of betrayal. I was not prepared for that. Not prepared at all so I can't wait for the sequel to this. This is a new release so we won't get a sequel until at the very earliest next year um, but I'm thoroughly, I did thoroughly enjoy this. I was the reason I took away one star is the whole time like our main character's motivation is protect little sister right protect little sister there's all these hints about her extra needs her special needs and she goes to this very expensive school uh but she because it's the only place that can ha deal with her special accommodations and you're like what the heck is this sister because the sister is not a siren they're not blood related um and she's not fey so what is she and the reveal of what she is was such a letdown i thought she was going to be something extremely unique and turns out it was just absolutely boring <laughs> so i was fairly disappointed with that which is why i took a star away but the rest of the book i thought was really really good then we read two different ebooks we also finished kuro kenshin by hala um kuro kenshin rebirth volume one and two which is set two years after the events of kuro kenshin volume five uh i read it i think what i'll say the most about it because it's still like i i have trouble connecting with a lot of comics um and especially something that hala wrote so 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 many years ago i didn't connect with the story like i do with her other books uh i i would say that the uh, art style was much improved and the plot line i thought was a little bit more joined because it's not disjointed it's joined uh, more connected than i did in the first volumes because i wasn't as connected with it there but this one felt a little bit more 
connected and I liked I really liked I liked the going back in history parts of the Kuro Kenshin story more than the modern day stuff uh, but it, this version of it had them paralleled very nicely so I liked that for both volume one and two and then the final book another five star read this book caused me so much emotional turmoil oh my god Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. Holy crap! I still can't stop thinking about this book and that cliffhanger. I don't know how I'm going to survive. Now, the second book does come out this December. I'm going to need it immediately. Um, oh my god. I didn't think... Everyone was hyping this one up so much, I was really scared. No, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get the hype. Oh my god. This book is so good. The characters are so good. The plot is so good. It's so interesting. The magic system so well, I mean there's the magic system sort of because it deals with gods. Um they're both typing on these typewriters where their their letters end up to them. So she's actually trying to write a letter to her brother who has gone off to war. Um, because it's set kind of magical World War One is what we're dealing with. Um, and sh they're both competing for this to be this columnist, so they're kind of rivals. And um, she's trying to write letters to her brother and then gets a reply back saying, this ain't your brother. Um, and then she starts creating kind of a you've got mail situation because lo and behold, it's him. Um, not a huge spoiler, it's revealed fairly early on um, that it's him communicating with her and they kind of fall in love with each other over these letters while there's other personal turmoils going on. She ends up becoming a war correspondent um, and being in the field. He joins her and they become even better friends and it's a little complicated that way but it doesn't strain that out too much of like the betrayal. It doesn't sit on that too long because there's so much going on. There's no time for that. Um, and it was like, I had like two hours left of the audiobook and everything was happy and good. And I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no. And I was right to be that way because everything falls apart. Not like they fall out of love or anything, but it's a war. It's a war. And that's all I'll say about it. Oh my God, it was so good. So good. It was the best. Oh my God, God. It's fine. I had a really great reading month. Let's look at our stats. In total, I read 21 books this month. We're back up to our regular average, which was a total of 7,456 pages and 173 hours listened to via audiobook. I didn't read any indies this month. I read three own voices stories. Six series were begun. I continued three and I did complete one with Kuro Kenshin. On average, the book sizes were about 355 pages um, but per day I was reading almost 250 per day uh, on average the audiobooks were about eight and a half hours long and it took me about 2.64 days to read a book but with an average rating of 4.02 which I believe is the highest it is that is the highest rated month I have never broken four on an average rating amazing uh, we read 15 audiobooks, a lot of those, two ebooks being Kuro Kenshin, and then four hardcovers, no paperbacks at all this month. Uh, 11 of those books were read by Libby, four by Scribd, uh, two of them were special ed editions that I read physically, which was Sing Me to Sleep, um, and who else was special edition? And Extraordinary, they were physically read uh, special editions, and then two author PDFs, which were Go to Kenshin. Uh, we had a fairly even split. 10 young adult, 10 adult, 1 middle grade. Pretty dang good. Uh, our genre breakdown, we mostly read urban fantasy with contemporary romance coming right behind it with historical fantasy and fantasy romance behind those. We had eight five stars. Eight. Eight whole five stars. Seven four stars. And then a scattering of others like wow. Um, we read 18 novels and then three manga slash comics. So we had Extraordinary and the two Kuro Kenshins. Uh, two were debut novels. Uh, eight were new to me and then 11 were repeat authors. We had a bit more on representation wise. We had six queer main characters with four side characters um, with 11 books being absent. So almost half the books had at least some queer mentions. Uh, we had six with disabled main characters and then three with uh, disabled side characters and 12 of them didn't have anything. Predominantly read women, uh, 17 books by women, three by men and one by a trans man. 
Um, we had our character gender was uh, nine women, six men, and then five combined of men and women, and one with non-binary. Oops, I need to move these back over. Nationalities wise, we read a lot of Americans. We had one British author and 20 Americans. Wow. With our settings, we were predominantly in the United States with 11 books in the US, six in a fictional land, two in Japan, one in China, and one in England. With our, uh, our publishers, Macmillan, actually winning this month. I think in the past, it's always been Penguin or HarperCollins. But this time it's been Macmillan uh, with Simon & Schuster getting four whole books on there as well as Penguin and then only two from HarperCollins and two from Hachette and two were self-published which was Kodo Kenshin. Our publication year we read five whole new releases, three from last year, two from 2021, two from 2020, five books from 2015 to 2019, three from 2010 to 2014, and one from the 2000s. Acquisition wise we read seven that I acquired this year, eight that I acquired last year, three from 2021, and three from 2020. No further back. Uh, in terms of where I got them from, Book Outlet wins with four, Pango for three, Second and Charles with two, Gifted. I did get three books that were gifted and three books that were through Fairy Loot because we did a lot of Fairy Loot. One Owl Crate, a small bookstore, Direct from Author, which is the PDFs of Kuro Kenshin. Then our total cost of books was $179.67, making each book roughly $8.56. Here's the fun part. That average cost is the exact same as last month. What? Crazy! We're gonna go take a look over at Haul Q to show you what I got and acquired in the month of September. Hi all, welcome to the haul portion of this video. I ended up getting more books than I intended to in September, so I'm kind of putting myself on a bit of a book buying ban. Granted, a lot of these I did get for free or really cheap or was in support of other indie authors. Uh, yeah, Mambo, not on the closet. Um, so anyways, I'm having a bit of a panic about how many books I've really acquired this year versus how many I started with last year. Even though I have officially read over 200 books, it hasn't really made a difference in this never-ending TBR. We'll say a lot of the time uh, when I need to like immediately order something from Amazon in order to get the one day free delivery, when it's like, I have to have this today, you have to get other qualifying items and spend about $25, so I usually go and see which the cheapest books on my shelf are that I can get in the one day thing, and that's how this happens. Anyway, we have an indie book here, and this is To Be a Fae Queen by Trisha Copeland. Um, I met Trisha at Mile High Con, I think like two years ago, and I just haven't gotten to her book, so we're gonna start that. We also have over the Broad Earth Volume 1 by J.L. Feuerstack. I don't remember how I heard about this book, but I heard really good things about it. Another indie. We have You Can Go Your Own Way by Eric Smith. Witchy Volume 2! I didn't even know there was a Volume 2. I read Witchy Volume 1 years and years ago because it came in my uh, Owl Crate subscription way back when, and now there's Volume 2 finally, so yay! Journey to the Heart of the Abyss by London Shaw. This is the sequel to uh, City, wait, what is it? <laughs> Light at the Bottom of the World, which I just read last month, so I had to get the sequel immediately. We have The Dictionary for Lost Words by Pip Williams. Also hear amazing things about it. Tender is the Flesh uh, by Augustina Bastarica, uh, which I've heard horrifying things about in a good way, because it's a horror, it's cannibalism. Anyway, we have Ithaca by Claire North. The Book of Gothel by Mary McMine. McMine? We have Bitter Souls by L.A. Morton Yates. This is also an indie book. I had to get a new copy of this because I have three different volumes and I was opening up volume one and the binding split. It just cracked in half and I had two halves of a book. So we got a new copy of the Divine Comedy. Look how pretty and shiny we are. This is my favorite like epic poem. Volume 1 of Sailor V Eternal, codename Sailor, Sailor V Eternal Edition. I accidentally bought volume 2 during my bookstore crawl and I made it a mission to kind of fix my 
what I've owned and like find the copies of books that I accidentally bought sequels for, find their first ones. Uh, we have See You Yesterday by Rachel Lynn Solomon, The Ghosts of Rose Hill by R.M. Romero, Men Slaughter Park by Tears of Price, Garlic and the Vampire by Brie Paulson because I accidentally bought the sequel before the first one. Same with this, Perdido Street Station by China Mieville. I bought the third book on accident. The Marriage Game by Sarah Desai. Again, I own both the sequels. Got the first one. Uh, the Vor by B. Catling. Again, another one that I bought the sequel for first. And uh, following that same trend, we have Circus Mirandus by Cassie Beasley, because I bought the second one first on accident. Uh, we have the next volume in the uh, Ancient Magus Bride. This is volume five, uh, so I can now read a bunch of those. We have, again, another one where I accidentally bought a third book instead of the first one. That is The Extremely Inconvenient Adventures of Bronte Metalstone by Jacqueline Moriarty. Another indie book we picked up is The Golden Hourglass by Ben Mariner. We have the next in Tamora Pierce's Song of the Lioness. We have In the Hand of the Goddess. Another indie book, Master of Salt and Bones by Carrie Lake. My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I hear decent things about that one. And The Fairy Bargains of Prospect Hill by Rowena Miller. Finally got my hands on the copy of this, and this is God Killer by Hannah Kaner. It's actually smaller than I thought it was going to be. We won an ARC giveaway on Goodreads, so I have an ARC copy of The Bad Ones by Melissa Albert. This comes out February 2024, so I'm going to try to prioritize reading that before the release date. We have this beautiful edition of The Jassad Air uh, by Sarah Hashem. We have Love and Other Alien Experiences by Carrie Winfrey. A fun edition of Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. I've never read Jurassic Park. We're gonna finally read it at some point in my life. Then the next two are wrapped up. We have both deluxe editions of volumes one and two of The Girl from the Other Side by Nagabe. That's just, just Nagabe. Um, I've heard amazing things about that. We have an ARC copy of Counterweight by Juna. I didn't realize I was getting a, an ARC copy when I got it off of Pango, but I did. Uh, Men Who Hate Women, The Extremism Nobody Is Talking About by Laura Bates. I saw uh, It's Bells make a review about this book and it, it dives into like incel culture and stuff um, and the horrifying truths in it. So I was very intrigued to read about it. Uh, we have a UK edition of The Lost Metal by Brando Sando. Then we have a fantastic new edition of Angels Before Men by Raphael Nicholas. Look at this beautiful art. And apparently has 15k more words in it than the copy that I originally read. We finally have a copy of Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin O'Leary Sainz in hardcover. Because when I read it, I only read it as an audiobook, which means... You now get to go on the shelf of colors, because I've already read you. We have Unseely by Ivelisse, Ivelisse, Ivelisse Houseman? I don't know how to pronounce that name. We have Rogue by Julie Cago, which is the sequel to Talon, which I do own, but it was during, when did I get that? I think I was trading in books at Second Charles. We also got the entirety of the Immortal series by Tamora Pierce because it was there and they were like $2 each. So I said, ah, you know what? If I'm getting into Tamora Pierce, why not? And lastly, least exciting, I guess, not as exciting as some of the other books I have, More Than Just a Pretty Face by Syed M. Masood, which is a contemporary romance. And that is the haul for September. Let me know what you guys bought this this last month or recently uh, in the comments below and uh, back to the rest of the video. Welcome back. We're gonna talk about cauldron prompts. We are in quarter four now, people. I actually did pretty bad with my cauldron prompts for quarter three. We were supposed to host a game night, do a literary recipe and a throwback. I did film the throwback video. I just haven't posted it yet. So that's coming. Game night, don't know when that's gonna happen. Literary recipe, I have it planned. I just don't know when it's gonna happen because I'm gonna be doing it with another person. So we need to decide our next ones. And by decide, I mean we need to pick out the rest of these. So I think there's only six left, I wanna say. I'm, lo I'm looking at them from the back here. I have one, two, three, four, five, is that six? Are you stuck together? Yeah, there's only six left. Normally I draw eight, but because I have litmus, this, as well in this quarter, I think doing six is a better option. Plus, I'm still going to try to complete all the ones that I have left over. They're still on the table, I just didn't complete them in the month. So first up, we have Upcycling 
or flipping if it'll focus. Upcycling or flipping. This is like doing a DIY project of taking something old and renewing it. We'll see. We do have puzzle. Puzzle, which I'm in the middle of one, so that's gonna count real easy there. We have a treat yourself day, which will be nice. A house deep clean, which is perfect for the new year, because I usually always do um, that at the end of the year. I do a deep clean of a house. I get to buy some indie books, which is great. I have three more conventions. And then do a sewing project, which I already have a project in mind. I wanted to make a keyboard pouch for myself. So that works. I think this will be much more manageable while I um, am preparing for Litmus. If you don't know what Litmus is, uh, it is 25 days during December, uh, you know, in place of Christmas because I celebrate Christmas. Uh, but it's literary themed 25 days of videos from me. You're welcome. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's the cauldron is now empty. That's it. Secrets coming coming forward. There will be more from the cauldron in the future. It is not it is not gone. It shall come back. <laughs> That's it. That's the wrap up and the haul and the reviews and the stats and the prompts. We've only got a few more months of the year left. My goodness. What a time. Cool. Well, hope you guys all had a great month last month and I hope it's even better this month and for the rest of the year. I'm gonna go now. See you next time, cuties. Bye. She's leaving, 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 living, living. Now we're clicking on pages read. Hours listened, indies read, own voices. Okay, calibrated.